when you start dealing with your shit, that does not become attractive to you anymore. You get to a point where your standards get so high and you stop settling. At the end of the day, I still know that I am a bad bitch. I am constantly worried about if I am enough for everybody else and if they like me, but I'm not even thinking about like, do I like them? I feel like this might be triggering for some people, but if you get it, you get it. If not, it's all good. At some point on her journey, she realizes her power. She rises from the ashes, the pettiness and the immaturity of her maiden status. And she grabs life by the horns. She magnetizes all she desires and embraces the fires of her darkness. She is no longer playing games and she is no longer settling. This is the dark feminine. hello darlings okay so to be all the way real with you guys i have been really in this like dark feminine era the last few months and i have been loving it okay honestly this whole year i have been learning a lot about feminine energy and really working on embracing the different feminine aspects of myself there comes a time in our lives where we are just down with the darkness we are done running from shit right like we are done running from it we are embracing it like our shadows our inner demons etc don't have control over us anymore because we are the queen okay i have been embracing my dark feminine energy the last few months and it has been liberating okay let me tell you i've been feeling so confident and so secure within myself so secure within my inner power so secure within my standards i i mean i just literally am not the same person and it's been beautiful so today in this video i want to tell you how you can embrace this dark feminine energy what i've done and also what is like what even is dark feminine energy why it's important etc so i got you covered okay but you want to make sure that you have a drink a snack that you're relaxing this is a chill laid back video okay i decided to do something different and do like a chill get ready with me style video so just a heads up make sure that you comment down below if you like this video if it helps you give this a thumbs up all of this stuff you know you know and with all that being said we are gonna get into this video so to understand dark feminine energy we first have to understand feminine energy the easiest way to understand this is that masculine energy initiates it moves forward it leans forward feminine energy leans back it attracts right masculine energy is the chaser whereas feminine energy is the attractor it's the magnetizer so when we talk about being able to magnetize that is feminine energy we all have feminine energy within us no matter who you are so now to understand this even more we need to understand darkness so what is darkness so darkness has been demonized for centuries because it's unconventional it's misunderstood it's mysterious and people don't understand it and when you think about it at night when the moon comes out where creatures come out at nighttime where there's more mystery because you can't see and when you really really think about this darkness has been demonized in so many ways so much more than just religion and because feminine energy is darkness which is why the moon is feminine because of that feminine energy and feminine beings have been demonized for the same reason and have been repressed for the same reason and still to this day. But many don't understand that darkness, the literal void of all creation, is feminine energy. This is why the womb is dark when a baby is in the womb being born. That happens in the darkness. We don't see that happening. That's not in the light. Masculine energy is the light. Feminine is the dark. When a seed is planted, we don't see that. It happens down in the ground, in the darkness. So much of the creation, the beginning of the creation process happens in the darkness. Because many don't understand that the darkness is feminine energy, because it's different, it's unconventional, it's mysterious, it's unknown, it's been demonized, it's been repressed, it's been oppressed for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So darkness is not evil. People always think dark is classified as evil. Evil, and that is not what we are talking about here and like even another perfect example of this is like when the seasons change to fall and winter the darker time of year where the sun doesn't have as much light where it's not shining as much these this time of year people start dressing differently right people start wearing darker colors black heavier makeup a lot of women do right and we start dressing very differently a lot more edgier like fishnets and combat boots and you know things like that because 
feminine energy. It's darker, it's mysterious. I know I fucking do. Let me know if you do down below. So also something I want to differentiate here, dark feminine energy is not shadow feminine energy, okay? Shadow feminine energy is needy, clingy, dependent, or you can be like in your unbalanced masculine where you're trying to chase or you're trying to to pursue all the time and you're not trusting because maybe you're not confident in your feminine energy. So when we have that clingy, needy, dependent energy, it literally repels, okay? And so that is the shadow feminine. The shadow feminine is wounded and that is different from the dark feminine. Not to say that it can never happen because these are different archetypes that we all have existing within us simultaneously, right? But but lately I have recently really found a, a newfound respect and a lot of newfound realizations on the dark feminine energy and I've really realized that it's actually a lot about knowing your power, maturing, doing things in a way of power and confidence and mystery rather than acting from your hurt wounded feminine and so when we can really get to this dark feminine phase in our lives which i am in right now and i am fucking loving like hello give it to me honey all day things start drastically changing and we really take our power back so dark feminine energy is literally a puzzle piece and embracing your goddess energy or your divine feminine energy in general which i've been working on a lot for like over a year now when we look at different mythology and we see these dark goddesses our dark feminine influences they embraced their darkness they embraced their edginess. They embraced the mystery. They embraced their weirdness, their wildness, their rebellious natures. Because feminine energy is naturally rebellious and kind of seductive and wild. So the dark feminine is not afraid of her darkness. She embraces it. So she ends up being the queen of her demons. Doing my makeup while talking about this is a lot harder than I thought it would be, honestly. And she gets in touch with her power through her darkness, through rebirth. Okay, makeup is on and we are ready to start talking about how I've been embracing my dark feminine and how you can too. By the way, if you're still here, let me know down below. This is when we get to the good stuff, so don't worry. One of the main things that I have like really been doing and like really noticed about myself is like, I used to be one of those people that I wouldn't say I was like a people pleaser, but I was somebody that always tried to get people to like me and was always worried that people didn't like me and was always thinking like, what if I'm not enough for them? What if they think this about me? You know, is this person gonna leave me? Is this person gonna abandon me? You know, what if they don't love me anymore? What if they don't like me anymore? I wonder what they're thinking about me. Like, oh my God, is there something wrong with me? You know, like I was always looking at myself from other people's POV instead of looking at my pov this was freaking huge for me you guys because i was like yo why am i looking at what other people could possibly be thinking about me so fucking much instead of like actually being like hey what do i think about them and when I had this like realization, you guys, like I cannot even describe to you how much this realization was like, I, I just like, it seems so simple, but so much of the time we are always thinking and worried about what other people are thinking, what other people think about us, if other people like us, if we are enough for other people, you know, like we are always doing that. And honestly, it comes from a lack of self-confidence. It comes from a lack of security within ourselves because we are not being our authentic selves when we do that shit, okay? Like, like we are just not. We're looking for validation. We're trying to fill this void that we don't think that we can within ourselves, right? Like we think that we're lacking in something when we're doing that. And by continuing to do those behaviors, by continuing to try to please everybody else, we continuously give ourselves the message that we are not enough just as we fucking are, that we can't be valued for who we are or how we are. And when I really had this realization and I took a step back and I was like, wait a second, I am constantly worried about if I am enough for everybody else and if they like me, but I'm not even thinking about like, do I like them? Do I like them? Am I happy in this in this situation? Am I happy with this friendship? Am I happy with this connection? And I am I happy? Is this what I want? Is this what I desire? There were a lot of times where it was a no and it was like, whoa, okay, so what am I doing? Like I'm sitting here like trying to be enough for them and hoping I'm enough for them, but I don't even like them or I don't even like desire. This isn't even what I desire. So why am I wasting my energy, my time, etc., when I don't even <laughs> desire this at the end of the day, right? This was freaking huge, you guys. Like this was huge for me. If you are one of those people that is always worried about if other people like you, what other people are thinking about you, yada, 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 then 
I'm telling you, you need to get back into your POV, your point of view, okay? Because once you do and you start asking yourself these questions like, wait, do I like them? Do I want them in my life? Do I desire them? Do I desire this kind of connection that we have going? When you realize those things, it's like it changes everything. It's like a freaking bomb drops off and you're like, whoa. Ever since then, it's like, given me this this relentless like permission to just be me no matter what to just be authentic af and not really care like what other people think as much like yeah there are people that i'm close to that i do care what they think but they're the right kind of people i trust and respect their judgment and i want them in my life and that's why but usually they're supportive and they support me and upgrading myself and being the best version of myself get you some people that help you expand and reflect something that you admire which leads me to my next thing is like falling in love with yourself i have like really truly had to fall in love with myself like i am my favorite person no lie okay like i am my favorite fucking person i have to live with myself all the fucking time and I am the only one that is always going to be there for myself. People come and go. They may have something else going on or whatever. You're always going to have you. You are in this body with yourself. So if you don't love yourself, if you don't know how to be your own best friend, your own mother, you know what I mean? Like I've had to learn how to be all these things for myself because I've been through points in my life where I didn't have anything, where I didn't have anyone, you know? So I've really had to learn how to be these things for myself. And it's really built a strong, secure, and solid core within me. I know that I got me. No matter what, like, I got me, you know? And that really builds yourself confidence. I'm not saying that you don't need to have any friends because again, like I said, I have close people in my life, but you need to have that solid inner knowing that like you have yourself because I was not one of those people that had that inner knowing. I always thought I needed someone else if shit hit the fan. I always thought like, oh my God, worst case scenario, I'll have my parents and then my parents died and I had li literally no one. I've had to figure out how to be that for myself consistently, how to be my own biggest cheerleader, my own best friend, my own mother, my own like significant other. Like I've had to do all of it, but by doing all of it, you gain this like powerful confidence in yourself that is unstoppable, that is un fuckable <laughs> like you cannot fuck with the inner confidence that comes from being that for yourself part of being that for yourself is calling your own self out on your bullshit when you see yourself resorting to needy clingy old toxic ways that you know are coming from the wounded little girl within you the hurt child or the wounded feminine or whatever calling yourself out on that shit and facing whatever you're feeling or whatever you're scared of because again the dark feminine is not afraid of the dark she is the dark feminine right she embraces her darkness and that's something else like i've really been doing lately like i've really been embracing my darkness embracing my edginess embracing my differences my unconventionality like my rebellious side my sexual side like all of it because fuck it. Like, I'm gonna be me, you know? And if I'm gonna be me, I'm gonna be me on fucking fire, okay? Like, I'm gonna be me doing the damn thing. I'm gonna be, like, the best version of me. And yeah, there are gonna be times where I'm not. <laughs> I'm having a shit day, or I'm not feeling it, or my wounded child is, like, kind of freaking the fuck out, right? And I'm having some issues, like, calming her down or making her feel secure. But, like, there are going to be times where that happens, and that's okay. We're human. We're not always gonna be just in our bad bitch energy 24 7 but at the end of the day i still know that i am a bad bitch and i can do anything and that i am capable of whatever even if i don't always feel like that or even if i have thoughts that tell me otherwise at times which is normal those are the days that you be with yourself that you take a step back that you focus on you right that you do the inner work etc so a lot of this is about falling back in love with yourself taking your power back i had to stop giving my power away so much to all these different things outside of me that i was powerless over i had no control over because it was like other people or situations out of my control but i was still like worrying and freaking out about it or my power to situations that i did have control over but i was like oh my god i can't do this you know, and I would be in this like victim energy and I had to step out of that, right? That is part of like really taking your power back. And I did a whole video that you do not want to miss if you have on taking your power back, because seriously, it will change your life when you start taking your power back. And our power is one of the key ingredients to manifestation. I have been manifesting like rapid speed lately, and it has been insane. Like, I don't even know 
how to describe it anymore. Like I, I feel like I'm in a different reality 24 seven. Like I have videos coming about how I've done it and everything. And I have a program starting soon as well about it, where we go really in deep, it's beautiful, it's for feminine energy and manifestation. So be on the lookout for that. Become kind of like obsessed with yourself and not in like a gross, egotistical, cringy way. That's not what I'm talking about here, okay? Like become slightly obsessed with yourself <laughs> in a bad bitch kind of way, okay? In a way where you are literally like your top priority because if you are not your top priority, if you are putting everything else before you, everyone else before you, you're gonna get burnt out. You're not gonna have energy to do for others, right? So when our cup is filled, then we can fill other people's cups. Then we can be the best version of us for those other people. Like people get so triggered by the word selfish, but this is something I've noticed with the dark feminine and being in my own like dark feminine era lately is like, I am thinking about myself more. I am thinking about what I want. I have to continuously remind myself like, wait, when I get too distracted by outside shit, by other shit, I have to bring it back and be like, yo, hold on, what do I want here? Like, what's my gut telling me? What's my heart telling me? What do I desire here, right? Instead of getting swept up by everybody else's opinion and what everybody else might think and yada, yada, yada. Like, I'm a Libra, so everybody else is my downfall. <laughs> like, everybody else is what I'm always fucking thinking about, okay? Not as much anymore. I feel like I'm a lot more balanced and not as much in those shadow Libra traits, but they still come up sometimes and I have to bring it back and remind myself, like, hold on a second, like, what do you want? What's going on with you, right? Like what feels right to you? Like quit waiting for everybody else. Do what you want to fucking do. And that's not fucking selfish because when I do that, I thrive and I'm able to be there for people so much more. Like I, my best friend right now is going through a difficult time and I've been in this energy just thriving, but because I'm thriving, because I'm so overflowing, I've been able to be there for her and support her and not be like burnt out, caught up in my own shit, disregarding myself, trying to be there for her, but then not really being for her, there for her because I'm not right, you know? Like, I've been able to support her in like a healthy way and, and really truly like be rock solid for her because I'm rock solid within myself. When I'm not rock solid for myself, I can't really be there for anybody. I can try to, but I'm gonna get resentful. I'm gonna be burnt out. I'm gonna be exhausted. I'm gonna be worried. I'm gonna be fearful, like all this other shit. So like, being selfish is not a bad thing because we all are inherently selfish. In fact, by you thinking that you're not, like a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I'm so, I'm so giving. Okay, but you give because you want some kind of validation. You're getting something from it, even if it just feels good to you, right? So you could still say that that's selfish, right? Like it always comes back to us because that's how we're wired and it's not a bad thing, right? I'm not saying you need to go around and like hurt people. I'm not saying selfishness in that regard. I'm just saying self focused right like you have to be a priority in your life like the dark feminine she doesn't have time for bullshit for pettiness for old wounded girl shit right like yeah it's gonna come up but she can handle it she can deal with it because she's in her power now, i feel like this might be triggering for some people but if you get it if you get it if not it's all good. <laughs> so in embracing like who you really are and loving yourself, this is also so much about embracing your sexuality because girl, <laughs> boy, whatever, like embracing your sexuality is huge with the dark feminine. Okay. Like it's huge. When we see dark goddesses, these different dark feminine figures in mythology, etc., or even in movies, so much of the time is about them embracing their sexuality, which makes them different, edgier, rebellious, like unconventional in some way, because they are way more tapped into their sexuality instead of hiding from it, repressing it, etc. They embrace it. They rock that shit. Like it's a new fucking style and don't care what anybody thinks about it. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go out and hurt people with your sexuality. Again, this is not about hurting people. This is not the shadow feminine. This is the dark feminine. This is the mature, put your fucking womanhood pants on dark feminine, okay? Embracing your sexuality is so huge because when we don't, usually a lot of the time it's due to shame. Either we were bullied or we were told different things or we were told to believe different things or, you know, we were kind of brainwashed into being insecure in some way or something happened in our childhood like all these different reasons but it all roots back to like shame or guilt and that lives in your sacral chakra right which is right in your womb area right where your sexual organs are and so when we have shame 
that energy lives there and it will literally block us from being able to be connected to our sexuality. For so long, I was so detached from my body, from my sexuality. But ever since I was a little girl, I was very in tune with my sexuality. So I knew that something had to happen because as an adult, I was not as in tune because I've I had a ton of sexual trauma throughout my life. So I had to do a lot of work on my shame to figure out why I was shameful, what I was shameful about. I express my sexuality in a lot of different ways and you can too. It's not just about sex, right? We express our sexuality by looking at someone. We can express our sexuality with what we wear at times, through art, through creative projects. Creativity is from our sacral chakra as well. It is literally a form of sexual energy. So, and that's why sexual energy is there because it's there to create something, right? And this is why orgasms are fucking divine. They are like literally part of source energy and you can create things or manifest things with orgasm. It's something that I do frequently, but another way, a huge way that I embrace my sexuality, and you know this already if you follow me on socials, but I dance. I dance, darling. <laughs> Which is a big deal for me because I was bullied in middle school at a very young age for the way that I danced because I danced very provocatively. I don't know where it came from. It was just me expressing my sexual energy at the time that I was feeling. So ever since then, I really repressed my dancing and my sexuality. There was like a lot more trauma after that that ended up repressing it even more for me. And so I had to do a lot of work on the shame that I felt. So the next thing is embracing your edgier sides, <laughs> embracing that dark bad bitch music that you want to listen to, but it's kind of naughty, embracing your naughtiness, embracing the things that are risky, like that you've been putting off, that you've wanted to try. Like what are the things in your life that your dark feminine has been wanting to try or wanting to do because it is unconventional, mysterious or whatever, but you're scared because of what other people may think or because it's really unconventional. The sun is just coming out and shining. <laughs> what are the things that are rebellious, edgy, mysterious, sexual, like all the all the dark feminine vibes that you've been wanting to try. A lot of my clients are like feeling this. It's so funny, like my clients so many times end up mirroring something that I've recently gone through or like whatever. And so I've been like just in this beautiful dark feminine badass phase of my life, just feeling so in my power lately. And my clients are too. One of my clients was like, I have been wanting to do these like pole dancing classes, but I've been scared and this, that, and the other. So lately she's completely stepped back into her power. She's pulled her energy back to her and off of other people. And she recently went to a pole dancing class and I swear to God, it had only been a couple weeks since I had talked to her. And she's like a whole different freaking person. I was like, oh my God. Like, I mean, it's insane. The results that my clients are having lately. But so what is something wild and rebellious and edgy that you can do that you've been feeling called to do, but you've been putting off? This is likely your dark feminine. How is your dark feminine speaking to you? Getting very, very aware of that and actually like listening. What are ways that you've connected to your dark feminine in the past? So the next thing is emotional maturity, right? Like emotional intelligence, emotional wisdom. If you've been here for a while or you've worked with me, I talk a lot about emotional intelligence because it is seriously the key to glow ups. It is the key to so freaking much. Your emotions are connected to your psychic gifts they're connected to your intuition, your creativity, your sexuality. They're connected to all of the feminine parts of you. But we have gotten so used to, as a society, repressing emotions, shoving them down, or you know, taking a bunch of things to not feel. That is blocking us from our feminine, and this is how we do it to ourselves. This is how we repress our feminine in today's world. When you shove your emotions down, when you are not connected to your emotions, you are basically doing the same thing that's been done to feminine energy and darkness for thousands and thousands of years, right? So if you have a hose and the hose is kinked, the water can't run through. This is the same with our emotions, right? That energy can't run through. Emotions are energy. So when we don't feel, it kinks our hose and we get detached or disconnected from our psychic gifts, our intuition, our sexuality, our energy, like so freaking much, our creativity, when we don't allow ourselves to feel that causes kinks because that energy gets stored in your body instead of runs through and expresses and comes out like it would like water out of a hose. We have to start embracing our emotions. This does not mean you have to project them onto people. You find healthy ways to feel. You find healthy ways to embrace your emotions because once you embrace them, you take the power away from them. You're not scared of them anymore. You're not running from them. So much of the time, 
we think we're like a victim to our emotions, but no, we're not. And then on the flip side of that, what I also had to start learning how to do was alchemizing my emotions. And this is something big that I've been really like constantly learning like the last couple years now, but it really is about taking that pain and turning it into your power. How can you do that? Like once you feel it, once you are, allow yourself to feel those emotions, then you have the power to alchemize them. Or I'm gonna turn this and transmute this into something else. You end up finding your power in the pain. You end up finding your power through these more difficult emotions. All of my anger and my hurt, or at least a lot of it from my childhood, I now use as my passion for what I do, what I do in the world, about what I do here on YouTube, about the things that I talk about, about working with other people. Also, you can ask your emotions to show you things. What is this emotion teaching you? What can it show you? The next thing I've really, really, really stopped doing, and this is a little bit more like this year recently, I stopped fucking settling. For so long, I'd be like, I would want something and I would go to the cheapest place to get it, right? And I knew it would be like a cheaper version of it or a version that like wasn't, as good or wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I kind of settle, right? And so that's like a, an easy example. And I'm not saying like every single time you're, you need to get like the best of the best or whatever, but where in your life are you doing this? in a way that is almost sending you the message like that that's all you can do or that that's all you deserve, right? Like, are you settling in ways where you're like, oh, I can't do better than that? Are you settling for mediocre because you think that that's all you can do or you think that you're not worth more than that? I see so many people like, you know, settling for relationships because they're in this scarcity mindset of like, oh, what if I don't find anybody else? Or what if I can't do better than that? Like, again, like you're not, like you need to pull your energy back, boo. So often we're chasing other people we're needy we're clingy we're like so on and on about other people if we are doing that like we need to pull our energy back and that is one of the main things that i've done like i've pulled my energy back and I've begun to focus more on myself, what I desire, what I want. I began to upgrade myself, fall in love with myself. I looked at myself like I am my biggest and most important project and this project is my priority. I am going to fix me up, get rid of all of the shit that I'm holding onto that is in my way. I'm going to reprogram myself. I'm going to completely become who I really fucking am and upgrade to the best version of me who's always been in there, right? It's not like I'm completely changing who I am. It's just letting go of all the things that I'm holding on to that are not me. Where in your life are you settling and not seeing your true value? Like that is really what, that has been another huge fucking one for me lately that has really just upgraded me and upgraded my mindset. Like in my mindset, my mindset is good. It is like turned up a thousand fucking percent. And if you would like see my life compared to my mindset, there is a little bit of a gap because my reality hasn't all the way caught up yet, but that's fine. Like I don't, I don't need it to, right? Because in my mind, like I, I know that I already am that. So it's only a matter of time before my reality starts reflecting that back to me, right? And it already is in miraculous ways, right? Like I've already been having crazy shit happen lately that I've been manifesting that I'm just like, how? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. But so yeah, like I said, I stopped caring about what other people thought so fucking much. And I did that by asking myself what I thought. Well, what do I think about this? Oh, what if people don't like this picture? Well, do I like it? Yeah, okay, well then who cares? It's about me, my POV. I'm the one living this life. Like no one's coming with me all the way to the fucking end, right? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe I do get lucky and someone comes with me all the way to the end, but I'm going to my grave alone. Nothing with this life is coming with me. And I am so sick of spending, like I've spent so much of my life worried about other people, focused on other people, like trying to be something that I'm not for other people and to get other people to like me. And I'm just done. Like, I am just done, boo. Like, I don't have time for that anymore. Like, I really don't. And I don't want to do that anymore. I value myself too fucking much now to start doing that shit again. And yeah, there are times where I catch myself, like, old thinking kind of reappears. And, and I have a conversation with myself. I basically also stopped trying to prove myself to everybody else. And I started proving myself to myself. Like, boom. I can't even tell you. Like, I am my biggest fan. I am my biggest everything, okay? Like, I am my biggest everything. And when you get to that point, you only accept people in your life that actually add something to your life. If you're your biggest fan, then somebody else better have that same energy. They better also be pretty damn close to also being a good fan, being supportive and things like that. 
or else you're like damn i respect myself way more than this person does so i don't have time for this person you know like you get to a point where your standards get so high and you stop settling where you know your inner power and again this isn't this isn't like cocky conceited bs it's true like i've never felt so much more of myself and so much more clean in terms of myself i still have empathy i still support people like i still do all those things i would consider myself a kind person but i'm not just this like nice little naive girl that doesn't know any better anymore i feel like the dark feminine is about us emotionally maturing and maturing into our best selves by embracing both the dark and the light within us and you also get to a place where you don't want to accept people in your life that are emotionally immature that like can't express their emotions that run from their emotions that don't want to feel their emotions like especially when they're adults you know like adults that can't deal with their shit when you start dealing with your shit that does not become attractive to you anymore people that are emotionally unavailable are not attractive to you at all anymore so yeah hopefully this made sense and hopefully you learned something from this also let me know did you watch the whole thing are you still here <laughs> let me know down below if you are you are a badass i really just wanted to talk about my journey with dark feminine energy and where i'm at and just this amazing place that i am at right now within my life let me know down below if you relate if you've been feeling these things lately if you've learned anything from this video and i hope you have the best time in embracing your dark feminine energy yeah i love you guys i will see you very soon in my next video